In this video, we, yeah, we, discuss, we continue our discussion of some of the issues facing developing economies. And in this video, we're going to look at the problems they face in terms of exporting of their products, whether that's agricultural or manufactured products, um, and the issues that can create for increasing debt in these countries. So basically, you need to remember that if a country imports more than they export, their debt levels will grow. So what we have is this thing called a current account deficit, which measures, amongst other things, imports and exports. And if we have a current account deficit, which is caused essentially by imports exceeding exports, we need to borrow money from overseas or sell off assets to fund that. And what happens in a lot of these developing countries is they import a lot more than they export, and that leads to increases in net foreign debt, and therefore they have to make interest on that debt. This debt then accumulates for a range of different reasons. So we've got to talk about the reasons for high levels of debt amongst developing nations. So the first one is, and as I said, if you're not exporting much and you're importing a lot, it's likely to lead to more debt. So in a lot of these developing countries, most citizens rely on subsistence agriculture, so they produce and eat their own food, um, and this often leads to little surpluses and therefore limited exports. Other cash crops and commodities that they actually do export, like cocoa and sugar and coffee, spices, um, timber, palm oil, rice, they're often exported but with little value adding, which basically means that they're not exporting the final product, they're just exporting the commodity, and often they don't get a very good price for these commodities. They often don't perhaps get the price they deserve, um, and it leads to a lot smaller value of exports or less money coming in from the selling of exports. They also, um, this, so basically developing countries receive a low price for their exports, and most of the profits flow to developed economies. The other problem is that many high-income countries like the US, Switzerland, the EU, they put tariffs on um, the imports coming from in developing countries and they also subsidise their own, their own um, domestic production. So they pay cash payments to local producers to protect their own industries. And this again makes it really hard for developing countries to export enough to, um, to not... To, to, I suppose make up for the amount of importing they do and that leads to rising levels of debt. So these subsidies also make it cheaper to import food from developed nations. So often the subsidies that developed nations give their businesses mean that the developing nations want to buy their products as well because they are cheap because of those subsidies. So not only is there reduction in exports because of increased tariffs and, and subsidies on um, products from developed economies, they also, the subsidies can be so high, sorry, so high, well, the, the amount of money they give in developed countries can be so large that these developing countries want to actually import from these countries. They have difficulty selling manufactured goods. Um, often developing countries with limited land rely on producing basic manufactured goods, so things like clothes, textiles, toys, electrical goods. Um, often citizens move to the cities, leading to increased unemployment and underemployment. But unfortunately, again, tariffs, import quotas and export subsidies make it hard for them to compete in the manufactured goods sector, as well, just like they struggle to compete for agricultural products as well. Um, they're heavily reliant on imports as well. Because these countries can only make certain products, there's a high sense of importing for food, oil, and more elaborate manufactured items. So your more high-tech equipment and things like that that is not really made heavily in developing countries because of a lack of infrastructure, they're imported in large volumes. And again, that leads to a larger current account deficit and rising levels of debt. Another problem they face is that, so not only have you got the problems associated with high tariffs and subsidies, um, a lack of money for their key exports, multinational companies are often hard to extract, extract tax from. So this leads to bigger budget deficits for the government um, and accumulates further debt for the economies as well. So multinational companies often take advantage of something called transfer pricing, which we looked at in the um, video about Zambia, where basically they manipulate the price of transfers of product between international borders within their own company. So what that basically means is they pretend like they're making very little profit in these developing countries. Um, so that they don't have to pay much tax in these developing countries and they shift the profits to other countries with really low tax rates. Most of the money then helps, goes into the shareholders and owners of the company who, are made, um, develop, who are, come from these developed countries and very little of the tax is given to the to economies of these developing economies. This leads to inadequate government revenue 
and makes it hard for them to provide essential services. It can also lead to a build-up of debt because they're not collecting enough revenue to fund their budgets. So multinational companies can potentially have negative impacts on these countries as well. Um, high levels of overseas debt repayments, so low savings levels. The other reason they have a large level of debt, besides the fact that they're not exporting much and they're importing a lot, is the lack of national savings. So because of a lack of national savings, um, they often borrow from overseas um, because it's often cheaper to exercise credit because uh, it can be really hard to get credit in developing countries. This leads to higher interest repayments, making it really difficult for them to purchase capital equipment. Um, because of high domestic interest rates, it's often cheaper to borrow overseas. And if this money is particularly wasted, so if it's like corrupt governments or they're not putting the money towards productive purposes, they can have real problems for the economy. So the IMF and the World Bank offer off, also offer loans at cheap interest rates, but because these are so enticing, it also leads to a build-up of debt. Um, the government often experiences high debt because of a lack of revenue, um, and that's related to corruption, subsistence production, and the high levels of the cash economy and bartering and things like that. So they've got these issues associated with lack of taxation revenue that stem from multinationals not paying enough tax, from the amount of people avoiding paying tax, um, and there's also a build-up of debt because of the lack of savings as well. So strong population growth leads to increased spending on infrastructure, health, education and transport, and they often run large budget deficits because of that, where their expenditure exceeds their revenue. Borrowed money is often lost through corruption, incompetent politicians or poorly chosen projects, and many low-income countries therefore find that they have high levels of debt compared to their GDP. Um, and the government trying to repay this debt means they often have to take money away from other sources. So to many developed countries are at credit risk, meaning they find it hard to attract loans. When they do, they have to pay really high interest rates. And because of the high interest rates or the costs associated with servicing this debt, they don't have nearly as much money for healthcare, education, um, to provide subsidies for food and agriculture as well. So it can cause really big problems for some really important types of investments because they're paying so much on in interest instead. The interest repayments on this debt also lead to less money to spend on health, housing, education, as I said. Um, that's why a lot of countries, developed countries, have been forgiving the debt of developing countries because the amount of money they're paying on interest that could have been spent on education and health is causing millions and millions of people to die um, in these developing countries. So they need to make sure that they, whatever money they are borrowing is for productive purposes um, and they're not wasted by government officials. Thank you.